What if I told you guys that you can run Microsoft Flight Simulator with hand tracking interaction in VR? Well, yes, that's possible and that's the topic of today. Guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Sweeviver. I hope you enjoyed my last video about the Google Maps mod for Microsoft Flight Simulator. Well, if you missed that out, I definitely recommend you to check it out. Today we're going to talk about leap motion hand tracking in Microsoft Flight Simulator. As you know, there was a Sim Update 7 released yesterday for Microsoft Flight Simulator and it introduced VR controller interaction. Now, the viewer control interaction is far from perfect, it's quite buggy, but I'm sure it will improve over time. Now, thanks to a SteamVR plugin that emulates VR controllers in any SteamVR game or application, you can run hand tracking instead of controllers. So, let's say you don't have any VR controllers or if you don't want to use your VR controller because maybe you have a yoke and rudders and all that stuff and you just want to do some cockpit interaction, maybe turn some knobs, uh, change the frequencies on the communication radios and all that, now it's finally possible. Well, at least if you have a leap motion hand tracking unit of any kind. But more about that later. I'm going to show you step by step how you install this plugin and how you make this running in Flight Simulator 2020. But first, I want to talk a little bit about this hand tracking, which is far from perfect, okay? Have in mind, the VR interaction that Microsoft or Asoba has added is so far quite buggy, it's very inaccurate I would say. And since this plugin or mod or whatever is using the same interaction, well, it's not going to be perfect, it's going to be far from perfect, but the most important part here is that it actually works. And once you get hold of it, once you spend an hour or two with this hand tracking interaction, actually you get used to it and it becomes easier to interact with the knobs and buttons and switches and all that. Something important here is that you should not use the hand tracking interaction to control a yoke inside of an airplane. It's just not gonna work. Just as bad as it is with VR controller interaction, handling a yoke or a joystick in an airplane, I would say it's even worse with this hand tracking interaction. So. I would recommend you to simply, before you start a flight, go into 2D mode again, or the desktop mode, and hide the yoke from the panel so it's not in your way when you're trying to navigate with some buttons which are behind it. It's gonna make your life so much easier, I promise. And also have some patience, because you might get frustrated in, in the beginning when you simply cannot point at those uh, small buttons or knobs and such, you have to get used to it. It's gonna take a while, but you can actually make it if you have the patience. This hand tracking plugin has several gestures you could use and one of them you can use to just jump into the menu of the Microsoft Flight Simulator, which is quite neat. It's very easy to just jump back and forth into the menu without using the mouse at all. And of course, in the menus you can navigate however you want, just like with the mouse or with the VR controllers. It actually works pretty great in here. The interaction itself of the buttons and knobs is handled the same way as you do with the VR controllers. So once you click the trigger, you're basically selecting the knob or button and then you have to turn your hand or the controller. Now in this case, when we are using hand tracking interaction, of course you simply turning your hand in each direction. When you are finished with setting your frequency of the comm radio or whatever dial or gauge you are trying to manipulate, just release the trigger and the gesture is quite simple. It's basically like pushing the trigger button with your index finger. You can see me doing this many times in this video, so it actually works almost every time. And I'm saying almost because sometimes it just it just glitches out and I think a lot of these problems right now with this interaction are not caused by the hand tracking itself because the hand tracking I'm using is actually pretty accurate, it's really accurate, especially with the new software from Ultra Haptics or Ultra Leap. 
So I think the problem here is basically the VR interaction, which is quite flawed. And of course, it's the first version that Asobo has released. So I'm sure it's going to improve over time and eventually it's going to get as good as x 11 VR controller interaction. Now, one more thing, as you know, the toolbars are not working in VR right now. Uh, they might fix it at any point. Uh, there might be a hotfix coming, but right now you cannot even use the toolbars with the mouse or the VR controllers, but that's going to get fixed. And once that's fixed by a Sobo, then you're going to be able to use the hand tracking to interact with the toolbars, with the air traffic control and all the other VFR map and stuff. So just have that in mind that it's not working as of now. Anyway guys, now that I have warned you about all the flaws and that this actually is far from perfect, let's head over to the computer and check out how this is installed and how you make it running with Flight Simulator 2020. Now as I said earlier, you could use this either with the Pimax hand tracking module from Ultraleap or any other Ultra Leap module which is existing, but I would say I would highly recommend you to use one of the new versions of the Ultra Haptic models and one of them is the one Pimax is using. It has a mu much wider field of view, it is more precise, it's more accurate and it just works better than the old Leap Motion uh, modules. If you're a Pimax user and you already have the Ultra Leap hand tracking module, then congratulations. If not, you can actually find it on the Pimax store and buy it separately for any Pimax headset. It actually is compatible with all of the Pimaxes out there. You can of course also find the regular Leap Motion module, both newer and older versions online on Amazon, for instance, and many other shops. Now, this is the plugin we're going to use for Steam VR. It's on GitHub, it's called Driver Leap, and that is what enables Steam VR controller emulation with hand tracking. The installation is pretty straightforward. I'm going to give you the link in the video description, of course, to this plugin. And there are basically three steps that you need to take here. First of all, we're going to download the Ultra Leap Gemini. 5.2 version. This is very important. You need this latest version of the Ultra Leap software to get it to work. Just download it from the link that is provided on the GitHub page. And if you don't have an account on the Leap Motion website, just create one for free. Next, download the plugin itself, the driver Leap plugin. The third and last thing we need to do is to add a very important line in the Steam VR configuration file. And I think we can start off with that because no matter what headset you have, you need to do this. Or I mean, no matter what Leap Motion module you have, you need to do this anyway. So when it comes to the Steam VR configuration file, it could be located in two different places. And I would recommend you to put it in both of them just in case, because it could actually be that this file exists in two different locations, but SteamVR is only using one of them and it's actually hard to tell which one SteamVR is reading from. Now in my case, the configuration file which SteamVR is using is located in my user uh, folders app data, local and open VR. The file is called steamvr.vr settings. If you don't have any file in there, check the program files steam and then config. Now open the file with any notepad or any kind of text editor and uh, scroll down to the Steam VR bracket. Here you're gonna insert this line and I recommend you, to, you just put it in the top inside of the Steam VR bracket and don't forget to put that comma at the end of it. Otherwise the file might get corrupted. So do just like I'm showing you here. After that, just save the file and close it. Now let's move over to the Steam VR Leap Motion plugin. Once you have downloaded it, you're gonna have to browse to a folder where Steam VR is installed. I'm showing you where my Steam VR is installed, and inside there, there's a folder called Drivers. Now copy the content, which is just a folder called Leap, just put it inside of that Steam VR config directory. 
Now if you go into the directory you'll see that there is a configuration file or a settings file for this plugin where you can change some left hand and right hand rotation and alignment and some other things but I haven't touched that yet and I'm not gonna go into that. Now the next thing will be to install the Ultra Leap Gemini 5.2 drivers and their runtime. If you're a Pimax headset owner, there's a really important thing here. As you know, when you connect the Ultra Leap or Leap Motion hand tracking unit, you're gonna see that PyTool is asking you to download and install the Leap Motion driver especially if you're connecting the hand tracking module for the first time. Now this is very important, do not install this Leap Motion runtime, it's not needed here. We're gonna use the Gemini 5.2 instead, because the runtime which PyTool asks you to install is an old Oreo, Orion version, something like that, and we're not gonna use that and it's not compatible with this plugin. Now let's say you already have that old uh, Leap Motion installed, remove it, just uninstall it from your computer and then you'll see in PyTool that, uh, that it asks again for the runtime. Now let it be as it is and just install the Gemini 5.2 runtime instead, the one we just have downloaded from their website. There's gonna be a blue pop-up window uh, with a warning, don't worry about that, it's a safe application so you don't have to worry, just accept it just as I'm doing here. Now once it's installed, bring up the Ultra Leap tracking control panel. If your Ultra Leap hand tracking module already is connected to your Pimax, if everything is green then we're good. If something is wrong, then I suggest you double check so the hand tracking module is correctly uh, plugged in into the Pimax headset. If the bars are green, then we can do a test to see how it works. Go to the second camera feed tab and click on the open visualizer. Now this will start up Steam VR and then the visualizer itself. You can put it on full screen and then you'll see that your hands are being tracked by the hand tracking module. Now when we know it's uh, ready, that the hand tracking module is installed and working correctly, uh, quit the visualizer and now you will see that there is a leap motion icon on the SteamVR status bar uh, right next to the controllers. Inside of VR you're gonna immediately see that you can control both of the Valve Index controllers with your hands and if that works here then it's gonna work in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 of course. So all that's left is simply to start up Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020, start up flight and just try this out. Guys, I know it might not be perfect, it might not be the best way to interact with the cockpit panels, with the gauges, with the knobs, with the buttons and all that, but still I think it's a wonderful addition to Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020, especially since the interaction is not that easy in VR after all. And if you're using a yoke just like I am doing with some rudder pedals and some thrusters and stuff, then you can simply just, you don't have to hold a controller to interact with the stuff, you don't have to use a mouse, you can simply just let it let go with one hand of the yoke and just push a button, bring the flaps down, bring the gears up or down or wherever and enjoy Flight Simulator even more I guess. So guys, thanks for watching, let me know what you think about this method of using hand tracking in Microsoft Flight Simulator and uh, yeah. See you in the next one. Cheers!